and I'm gonna hit the share screen. I'm gonna to try to bring this up. Okay, can you see the screen everybody with your first? Okay, great. And so we're gonna go through this uh, today, gonna to talk a little bit about it and we're gonna cover it. Um, those chapters or this session is session three, how to build a successful real estate business starting with nothing. And what I found in, in my 30 years in the business and bringing on agents that were part of my company and being surrounded about agents who surrounded me in companies that I didn't own was that many of them start with nothing. And it's hard, especially if that nothing is a financial nothing. It's really difficult to make it in this business. My mode of operation has always been when I've worked with people and helping them grow their business. And this um, L, this might touch you because you reached out to me yesterday and mentioned uh, about um, uh, foreclosures and short sales and buying things that are available to you to be a foreclosure expert, maybe even to be uh, get a designation or a certification. My personal belief, although I've spent tons of money on all that stuff, and I have designations of the yin yang, whatever. Uh, what I try to do is things like this book. What I try to do is, is show you ways to be successful in business that where you build it yourself with your own hands, like building your own home with your own hands um, at one step at a time. So going forward, we all know what a, we all know by this time, hopefully what a mastermind is. So whenever you hear anybody talk about a mastermind, you know that it's a group of people just like us. And we're here to solve problems, to talk about issues, to talk about whatever methodology that we'll be addressing in this. And so whenever you see mastermind somewhere, if, you, if you're invited to a mastermind, know that it's the perfect opportunity to be able to uh, network with other people. Uh, somebody that's really good at masterminds, an expert at masterminds, is with us today, Bob McKinnon. And I mean, he does excellent masterminds and, and knows bringing people together, helps people build their business. And whenever you see that Bob is doing a mastermind, covering a book, whatever the book might be, know that it will be in depth. It'll be much like what we're doing. And it's going to pick out those pieces in the book that he feels are important for you to focus on for you to notice to to become better at what you do and to become a leader in business and what we're trying to do i think all of us at exit are trying to help you all be leaders and you are all leaders we just are working on it all the time it never stops so chapter six i think we might have touched a little bit on this last week but i i if we didn't um let's do it now i know for me I've read the book several times and I've done this mastermind a couple of times. So sometimes I forget, God, did we do this? I don't remember. It's like it, it, it's right here. So let's just talk about the F word. And when she talks about the F word, it's talking about fear. And listen, one of my biggest concerns for agents in this business uh, for everyone is fear because I have found, and I believe totally, as I mentioned last week, that we're all being taught how to succeed in business. Everybody is telling us what we need to do to be successful in business. And you can take that route. We all need to take that route. What I think is super unfortunate is no one teaches how to face fear and how to address fear when it happens. Uh, John Maxwell, um, whom Bob and I are, are part of the Maxwell organization. Uh, what he talks about in one book is called Failing Forward. I believe that it's a book that should be taught in a mastermind event, that it should be read, that it should be taught to every agent. It should be taught to people who are in business because you need to know how to fail forward. So many of us have given up on things. We've stopped because we didn't know how to fail forward. We knew how to fail. And some of us have been really good at failing. Don't want you to be there. We don't want to be there. Sherry says F is for fear. F is for failure. And she also goes on. I'm going to minimize my screen so I can read all this. The failure is one of the ugliest monsters out there. 
It can stop you from doing what you love because you're afraid that if you put yourself out there, you could be rejected, dismissed. You could be hurt. Let me just talk about me. Uh, I'm doing this mastermind. And today, there's seven or eight of you here. And I'm appreciative for you to be here. And I, I hope you're getting something from this. But do I feel many ways that that ugly monster has attacked me because there's not 50 people here, that there's not 200 people here. I mean, I set out invitations to this to all the exit offices in Texas. I sent an invitation to the mastermind to all the Pacific West offices, all the people that I know. And you're here, and I'm I'm appreciative for you being here. And what's important is that you're here. And what I learned long ago, being a musician, is that there were times that I would play to a group of several people rather than a group of hundreds of people. And I could look at that as, as a failure that people didn't show up. But what I tried to do was always sing or uh, perform musically for whomever was there. It didn't matter that there weren't hundreds of people I'd hoped, but there would only be several. So Sherry reminds us, Failure is one of the ugliest monsters out there, and it's going to happen to you if it hasn't happened to you in the business. You're going to fail at something. The listing presentation that you did is not going to be uh, accepted, and you may not get the listing. The buyer that you took out may not find the right house. You may struggle to find a home for them, but I believe you have failure is ugly, but you have to fail forward. Okay, so keep that in mind, because you've all been there. We've all been there where we failed, right? I think we all have. If I asked all of you uh, for examples, could all of you give me an example of where you failed? I'd love to hear your failures. I told you about, you know, one of mine being in performance where uh, only several people showed up and I'm, I'm singing to a group of just three or four people. Did I feel like a failure? God, yes. But have you had any times where you felt like a failure, where you had to recover? I'd like to hear what your thoughts are in this mastermind. Anybody voluntarily come forward, share a failure? It's quiet. Bob, tell me about a failure you've had. I still family. have some. Well, I, I still have fears. Believe it or not, I have a list of people I'd like to talk to about sponsoring. I, uh, I try to sponsor top agents. I've sponsored one of the top REMAX agents in the country, uh, Keller Williams. And, I, and quite frankly, uh, Jim, I sit sometimes ready to dial the number and I'm, I'm afraid to. I'm having call reluctance. Um, See, I would never, I would never believe that, Bob. See, and, and others, I, I just wouldn't believe it. It's like, you know, Bill Nasby. Bill Nasby, for those that did not know, Bill was part of the exit organization in a leadership possession position, just like Bob. And one of the things he would tell us when he would teach door knocking, that was his thing, is that he, I've mentioned it to some of you before, he would park his car ready to knock doors and he would look down the street and he'd say, he'd say, God, I just wouldn't see a door. They they disappeared on me because I had so much fear to <laughs> not take doors, right? Yeah. And and so, Bob, you have the same thing. Bob, who's invented really the, the elevator speech for uh, sponsoring, has really created the sponsoring mechanism that Exit uses. It's stunning that you would still find that Fearful. Yeah. Well, I've got this folder of potential sponsorees, and I'm and all all I got to do is pick up the phone and start the conversation. And I'm sitting there grinding on it, going, "Oh man, I kind of dread this." Yeah. Uh, so what you know. What do you dread? Are you what, Are you afraid they'll say no? I, I'm just curious for all of us because sponsoring is such a huge part of our company. It's so important to all of us. Well, these guys are big, strong agents, and they okay. think, they think they're smarter than the whole wide world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. And so I kind of dread getting into the. Uh, see, talking to you guys, uh, we're in the same same ilk here, but they're not. They 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 have agendas. They have attitudes. So I yeah. 
I just kind of don't like getting engaged in that kind of stuff where I know I'm going to have to kind of play, you know, going to have to defend myself, defend my position, explain exit. And, uh, you know, it's just, be, it's, it's typical call reluctance. But to yes. your, to your question, Jim, failure. Um, you know, I have, I, my dad was a Dale Carnegie sponsor. He owned California as his franchise territory to do all the Dale Carnegie courses. So when I got out of college, after I came back from Vietnam, I, I um, started working for my dad. And my job was not only to teach the Dale Carnegie course, but to go sell it. So he'd give me a town like Bakersfield, California. And I'd go into Bakersfield and I would try to sell a class of 30 people to join and it would it was absolutely gruesome um i did that for about a year and a half and i finally said you know i'm not cut out for this and i really felt badly because um it was my dad's business i was my dad's son and and um when i the the good thing was i quit that to join real estate which was a great success for me but um I felt bad for that. I mean, it changed uh, Thanksgiving lunch for years. Hmm. <laughs> Amazing. So um, you you had a failure and you yep. picked up and, and you moved on. So yep. Well, yep. Yeah. Anyone else? I have Anyone? one. Yeah, go ahead, Carrie. Kara. Well, this is this is when I was a, a life coach. I was just starting and it was brand new. I just wanted to help people. And so I used to do motivational videos. So I reached out to a hundred plus people in my Facebook group. And uh, I reached out to some big name people and just some people I know. And long story short, I just asked them, is it okay if I send you motivational videos just to put myself out there? Let me know if you like it, you like what you're hearing. Yeah. And this yeah. one lady, she's kind of like a top coach. And she pretty much told me, um, I don't think this is the right way you should be reaching out to people. And she was very smug and Mm -hmm. and very ugly about it and so at first I was like oh no I might have reached out to the wrong person um <laughs> I was like yeah. you know and I just apologized and I said well it's okay if you say no I'm I'm just asking and so she was like I can teach you better with systems how to reach out to people and I was like well I really didn't want to use the system because I want to personally reach people and actually build a, uh, a, relationship, a relationship with people I'm si sending uh videos to well, I thought we had an understanding and I thought that everything was okay. And then I found out on her Facebook page, she blasted the whole conversation and she didn't even <laughs> post the no. whole conversation. She just made it look like I was just begging for attention. And yeah. she was like, yeah. this is not the right way to do things, ladies. And I mean, she blocked out my name, but it was just very rude. And then I saw all the like people in the comments and I looked at it as a failure at the time. And it almost made me fearful to reach out to people again. And my mentor at the time told me, you know, when you see fear, that means you're going in the right direction. Mm. You're stepping out of your comfort zone. And failure is a result. Always look at failure and success as a result. It mm. might not be the result that you wanted. That's why you see it as a failure. But it is a result. And you just keep doing it and keep doing it until you get the result that you want look at success and failure as the same thing. And the same thing is it's a result. Everybody's not going to love you. Yeah. And if somebody does resist you, you might be going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I always keep in the back of my mind when it comes to fear is when I'm scared, I know I'm going the right direction. And Kara, it, it sounds like you could almost have written this chapter, right? I mean, <laughs> right. When I, I would guess when you read it, it spoke to you and you're, and you're yeah. thinking, my God, she's writing about me because it, as we can see on the screen, if you're all able to see it, that on page 72 is what if people judge you? Well, you were judged. What if you leap and fall? Well, you, you fell. What if, mm -hmm. what, whatever, it really doesn't matter. Preparation always, always wins in the end. And it's going to get you to where you need to, we need to be. And let me just let Tony in. 
in the room. And so if you don't know how to get what you want, find somebody who's already doing it is one of her suggestions. And for all of you here, that is something that Exit is really, really good at. That Our company is so different from every other real estate company on earth. It really is because everybody wants to help you or most people want to help you. In, in every office, there's going to be somebody who's too busy and too big, so to speak, to, to help you. But if you don't know how to get what you want, find somebody who's already doing it within our company. And right, this touches on what Sherry talked about with finding a mentor, with finding a visionary, with finding an accountability coach and a, and a coach. So find somebody who is doing it. She says, working out of fear, failures, and paralysis, I think about the worst possible thing that could happen. And she says, give yourself a freaking reality check, okay? Um, let's, let's move on. Scared me and smart me. So be the smart me, okay? Be the smart me. Don't, don't care if people are judging you. Um, one of the agents here talked, you know, on the call today, talked to me last week about uh, a person, a neighbor listing his home with somebody else. Well, don't be the scared me, be the smart me, keep moving ahead whenever that happens, because it's going to happen to us all. Then rejecting rejection. Rejection is the ugly st stepsister of failure. And she says, isn't she a bitch? She's just a bitch. Rejection is everywhere in our business. And we have to learn to just to grab what we can and move forward. And then the one of the calls you might remember in reading where somebody said, hey, Shelly, did you know your client is working with another agent? That's the kind of thing you're going to hear in your business. You're going to hear, you know, that ugly stepsister that comes out in business where there's rejection, where a person you thought would work with you doesn't. And sometimes it's even our own family that, that works with somebody else. Those are the hardest ones for me. Good friends who never bother to even call and say, you know, Jim, I'm interviewing a couple agents. I, we're friends. I want to be able to separate business from friendship. And so I selected someone else, it, not even giving me the chance to talk to them. It's going to happen, you guys. So she says, number one, take ownership of your actions. And what could you do differently? What can you do differently when that happens? Number two, consider the why. Look closely at all the actors and their actions. Look solidly at that. Number three, let yourself feel it and move on. Feel the pain. She said, break something, whatever it might be, feel the pain and move on. The approach I always took, and even that I have taught my children when they weren't selected for the lead part in a theatrical uh, a play or a musical, when they weren't selected to be on the team, a team of some sort, sports team or a debate team, is that, you know what, it's their loss, them not choosing you. And this goes for all of you here today. It's their problem. And it's their loss. If someone chooses not to work with Tom, with Tony, with, with L, with Kara, with all of you here, the way I look at it, they're going to lose out on all the tools that we have at Exit, and it's really their loss. So feel it and move on. Then in Chapter 7, Sherry talked about mindset. Hugely, hugely important because we, I believe we have to go into this business at the right state of mind, and we really need to work on our mind. Her chapter is called Mindset, and as you recall, she always has two titles, or How to Get Over Yourself Already and Buzz Your Way to Brilliance. And by the way, there's, and I know there's some typos in here. I'm sorry about them. I just didn't, uh, I didn't correct them because it was too difficult. So if you see a ty typo, um, don't judge me. Um, anyhow, so she talked about the power of visualization. So her basketball story, leading that uh, realizing that what you think about is generally what comes true. 
It's all letting go of limiting beliefs. And I mentioned that as we started, that limiting beliefs are believing that you can't do it. You can't sell 20 properties this year, L. You can't do it. And there's going to be people who are going to tell you, L, you can't sell 20 properties this year. But you have to be able to expand that. That's a fixed mindset. And what she suggests is to find a growth mindset that, yes, you can do everything you want to do. You can do it. And psychologists have looked at that. She uh, she talks about Carol Dweek, uh, who is a psychologist that talks about a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. But it just these mindsets do not come naturally. They just don't come naturally. You have to build the mindset. You have to know the difference between fixed and growth. And in at Exit, we talk about growth. You can do this, and there's things you can do even within our office to grow that. So I hope you're you're as you're reading the book, you're making notations, you're writing something down on a piece of paper, so you will go back and study mindset. And you will study what a fixed mindset and a growth mindset is so you can do better. She gave first year examples that her examples, uh, Shelley's, where I can't make it in real estate because I don't know anyone in town. You all remember she knew, I think, four people in town when she moved to Portland, Oregon from Canada. Number two, that money was scarce and it proves people more educated or smarter than me because they've got money and I don't. I think many of us believe that, that there's just not enough money and other people have it, but I guess I'm not smart enough to get it. I, I've got to tell you from my standpoint, and Bob has been around in real estate. I've been in for 30. I think Bob is, is a 40-year veteran in the real estate business and still going strong, is that there's a heck of a lot of people that are smarter than us. Uh, maybe not a lot smarter than Bob, but I can tell you from my standpoint, a lot smarter than me um, that are, you know, and there's a lot of people, a lot of people who aren't smarter than me that have fantastic businesses. So know that you need to believe in yourself. I'm an introvert. They won't like me. Okay. Uh, for her, I can't believe that she's an introvert, but she said that she was an introvert. She didn't like groups. It was hard for her to meet people. It was hard for her to talk to people. But everyone here, you need to do your very best to go outside of yourself, to have that growth mindset that says, yes, I can meet people and I will be strong and, and they will like me. They will want to work with me. And she also thought, number four, women don't belong in business. Now, she's a pretty strong woman. Maybe those are beliefs that she's found from other people in the fixed mindset that women don't belong in business. I, I know Bob was in business uh, when it was probably 80% men, maybe more than that. Bob, you, you probably remember that, right? And yep. uh, am I right? Well, it was, um, <clears throat> it was more than that. Uh, the, the typical real estate office, uh, when I started, had only 12 to 15 people, and it usually had one female. Crazy. Now, interestingly enough, guess who was the top producer? <laughs> yeah. The one, the one female. Uh-huh. Even way back then. Yeah. And so <laughs> it's completely turned around now, right? Yep. Women 70 70 percent. It's 69 percent. I think the next counting, it'll be 70, 71 percent. Of mm -hmm. all NAR members or mm -hmm. female. Yeah. And if if any of you want to know just how smart Steve Morris is, the founder mm -hmm. of our company, if you want to know how smart he is, all you have to do is look who he surrounded himself with. And he surrounded himself with mostly women. And yeah. That's a smart guy, if you ask me. Uh, there was nothing self-limiting with the women that he has in there, and those people are amazing. So what kind of do you have, those of you that are here, any of you want to talk about any self-limiting uh, beliefs that you might have or that you had? Is there anybody that wants to talk to that? Anyone? It's it's kind of being uh, very open. 
And you know, I, I know every one of you have one or two of these. And it's, I, would, I would really be interested for you to share it. Number one, we maybe make and help you with it, but I'd, I'd be interested to hear this on your personal level. I honestly think people think I'm weird. I don't know why, but I do. Okay, you, so you think people think you're kind of odd? Yes. Okay. Or I'm very deep. I'm not very surface, so I don't know. They read me wrong. Well, I, I, they rate you are who you are, and and so right. you're right. You're right for who you are. Um. So how has that has that hindered you in in you? How has it shaped you? Not so far in real estate, but like flying, I've had people tell me stuff, and I'm like, really? Or I don't know. They just they totally read me wrong, so it's different. Hmm. That's interesting. I don't know if weird was the right word to use, but um, I misread a lot. Yeah. So people don't understand you quite as well. It, they Right. Okay. They may think I'm nosy or something, but I'm just trying to get to know people. I'm very deep and I um, All right. ask a lot of questions to get to know them. In fact, my kids will say, when you meet my mom, you're going to have an interview. Just go with it. Mm. Okay. <laughs> well, you're, you're interested in people you know you're interested in i i'm kind of this the same way uh kimberly I'm, I'm the same kind of way and my wife it drives my wife crazy because when we meet somebody i i ask them questions and my wife is like oh god just shut up you know you that's don't, how you oscar don't know is the hell? yeah yeah so he says the same thing to me he's like oh my god kim i'm like i'm just getting to know them well we need to hang out because we we understand <laughs> uh, anybody else anybody else one. yeah go one. ahead Thank you, Karen. Um, I, I was raised to believe the world is dangerous and scary. I'm from a small town in Texas. And I, when I graduated high school, I wanted to travel abroad and my parents was not having it. So that was one of my dreams. And I actually didn't do it because they made me so fearful of the unknown and what mm -hmm. could possibly happen being so far away and not easily to get to me. And then I lived in New York for two years and they pretty much kind of talked me out of still staying there because they just could not believe I lived in this big city and I was living there for two years and they would make me feel so bad that I was so far away so I ended up moving back to Texas just so mm -hmm. they didn't have a heart attack or be worried every day because they're thinking the worst was going to happen with me being yeah. out there so I had to learn and get out of my head that I can't please everybody if this is something that my heart is telling me to do I need to just do it and not listen to um, outside influences yeah well and uh, 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 shelly talks about that that it, the people that you surround yourself with it's so hugely important now, they're your parents they have self-limiting beliefs because of their upbringing and so forth they're looking probably Kara, to do the very best for you they weren't looking to hold you down and hinder you but um, they had self-limiting beliefs on what the world could provide to you a as a good thing i get that um how about you, Tony? Is there is there anything um, self limiting beliefs? What what might have stopped you maybe from doing something in the past, where you realized that <clears throat> you're moving forward trying to do something about it? Share with us, if you would. Well, one of my uh, one of my things is uh, is when I uh, when I go out and uh, meet new people. Uh, um, so what I'm trying to get out of is that I'm very, very quiet. I kind mm -hmm. of stand back from like the crowd when they're talking and I get to know people. And one of my friends just tells me, you know, I'm the type of person that uh, you have to hang out with more than two or three times. And then you just, you know, become this person that is very involved in, in the conversations and, and just, uh, you know, just goes on and on and on and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I, I, when I first meet new people or, or in, in a new group or something like that, I'm very shy. I'm very uh -huh. just observant and just not, not don't talk. Basically, I just, I just observe and and uh, and once you get to know me though, it, it I become like a big part of the group and and very loud. Would would it help you to uh, work with someone that would help you? 
um, and knowing the right things to say when you meet people or to give you more confidence when you go into things like that? Is, is that something that might help, Tony? Yeah, maybe I've never thought about that, but yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think, you know, talking to someone, I, I'd love to talk to you about that if you remind me of it, is because I have the same um, reluctance of walking into a group. And if there's three guys standing around and there's kind of this open space where I could walk into that group, I feel really inferior to that group. And like, will they accept me? And if they're talking about something I don't know anything about, am I going to look stupid? You know, so it's, I get it. So let's talk about that sometime. And maybe someone here uh, would be willing to step out and help you. Al, how about you? Tell me, uh, what what are some of the, a couple of the examples you can give us? Yeah, for myself, um, I'm not a little guy. And um, I fear that people like Kim said, will judge me by, oh, I'm scared of that guy. He's too big. Uh, like yesterday, I was in, in a training with Tom and, and Kim, the other Kim. Um, and a guy came up to me and said, you're too big to be in real estate. And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> wow. um, the other one I have is not having enough information when asked questions. No. Like if I'm door knocking, which I haven't done yet because it is a fear. Mm -hmm. um, but door knocking is they and they start asking me questions. I'm like, I, I tend to stutter or stump, you know, stumble over my words at times. And then yeah. I start to think like, is this person judge me? Is this person looking at me and saying, who's this joker at my door? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I Al, I think we all have that. I, I know I have. Am I going to have the right answer or am I going to look like a real stooge? And there's a lot of times trust me, you're probably all aware of it by now. I don't have the answers. And mm -hmm. I, I feel that I should with the number of years I've been in business, but a lot of times I don't, but I can promise people, as I'm sure you do. Uh, if I don't know the answer to that, I, I will find out and I'll make you the best informed, whatever buyer or seller that anybody could be, because I'll give you the right answer, not just an answer and right answers are more important. Mike, how about you? I'm pretty much perfect and don't have any. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next person. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, I, Hard I to can, be humble. I know, right? <laughs> I tend to second guess myself on things, even if I've done a bunch of research and, and I know the information, if it's like in a discussion with, you know, like say this group or something. And if I know I'm correct, I may not speak up because I'm like, okay, what if... I am wrong, then I'm going to look like an idiot, <laughs> you know, things yes. like that. So like, there, there's been some, you know, even with like doing the videos I'm doing now, you know, having information and things like that. I'm like, if I say something wrong or if I get something wrong, I'm going to look stupid. And, you know, then people aren't going to want to use me because I made a mistake. So I, I have to give my, myself some, you know, room for error. Not that I'm trying to be wrong or incorrect, but that it's okay sometimes. Uh huh. And, uh -huh. and a lot of times I'm not wrong anyway, you know, when it comes to like information and stuff that I've researched or I may misspeak and, you know, I, a lot of times there's sometimes that people are, can be somewhat intimidating in that aspect because you correct yourself, but before you get a chance to correct yourself, like, Oh, I'm sorry. I misspoke it. I, this is what I was mm -hmm. actually trying to say, somebody will correct you. Like, yeah, I don't, they're like waiting for you to. <laughs> yeah. Well, this, Mike, uh, Mike, has, me off. Mike, everyone, Mike has a, a huge agenda for um, placing himself on YouTube as uh, I don't for I don't have the right words being a YouTube being prominent with YouTube in the Dallas, Texas area. And I, there's probably been, Mike, a lot of reluctance in getting it started, hasn't there? Right. I mean, I, I know you've talked about it for a while and it's getting off the ground now. Thank you for sharing with me. Um, but there's probably been a little reluctance as he's talking. To him. Am I going to say the right thing? Is are people going to are they going to choose my YouTube topic over others? Am I going to be able to do be that expert that everybody's going to go? Oh, I know the video you need. You're moving to Texas. Watch the videos. Go to Mike's videos and watch his videos. So there's reluctance on building that, right? Well, like, like yesterday, 
was completely uncomfortable because I'm standing in the middle of, you know, Keller Park and Keller Point area with a bunch of people around and I'm talking to a camera or to yeah, my phone. I know. <laughs> I know. I, 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 me too. I, I even get uptight when I'm putting a real estate sign in a yard where people are mm -hmm. going to be watching me and am I doing it right? And are they going to watch how I pound it in the ground? And is it going to be straight? And am I going to hit a rock, especially when I was in Bend, because it's built on rock? Am I going to hit a rock and then I'm going to have to move and are they going to laugh at me and all that kind of stuff? But good, good. Any, we have time, one more, one more person. Anybody want to admit something uh, that's been an issue for them? Sure, I'll go. Okay. You know, listening to Tony, it sounded a lot like me. And uh, yeah, I'm a comfortable introvert. I can sit there in any room at any time and avoid any conversation and be perfectly fine. And <laughs> uh -huh. it's, it's, I just, uh, I forced myself to get out of that. I, my previous work history, I had to speak yes. with groups and training and all that kind of good stuff, which has helped. And my wife is an extrovert. She is the chatty. We'll talk to anybody and we can't seem to leave a party because somebody's still talking and it happens to be her. And so, she's carried, she's carried you through so many parties. By well, the, right. Yeah. And I'm doing that this weekend as well. So, <laughs> but yeah, so that's helped me, but it's still a, a fear. I I'd just as soon sit with Tony when you stare at each other, as opposed uh -huh. to start, start up a conversation. So that's, that's been, and it's a drawback with the real estate as well. So uh, it's it's held me back from doing some of the uh, happy hours and whatnot. We'll uh -huh. up by the time I get there. So, so yeah, I'm trying to do better at that. And my wife's kicking me along the way. And mm -hmm. you know, I just, I just had, yeah, it didn't kill me before. And it's not going to kill me going forward. So, yeah. Well, I, I think the point for all of us is, especially Tom and, and Tony, is you have to find to make uh, you have to find a way to make it as enjoyable as you can, or you definitely won't do it. And you have to kind of go to any meeting a little bit prepared with uh, knowing what to say if somebody asks you a question or how to how to actually ask questions of people when you're in a room. So I think we can work on that as, as a group and as as a company. I think it'd be something great great to work on. May I add something, Jenna? Please do, Bob. One of the things I think that we make, the mistake we make is we have the wrong expectations. I think if you feel like everybody in this business ought to like you, or we're going to, we're here to make friends, um, you know, that, that's just, a, that's an assumption and a place that, I mean, we're realtors. Uh, we are valued because of what we know about real estate. Just like any other profession, uh, when I when I meet with a doctor or an attorney or a CPA, I don't really judge them for what how they look or what their personality type is or any of that stuff. <clears throat> what I go to them for is to, I've got a, a I've got a accounting problem. See, it, I'm going to tell you that right here in Grapevine, Colleyville every month comes out a newspaper called impact <clears throat> it's just a delivered to your home is a throwaway paper called impact in that is a full page on real estate every month mm -hmm. it will tell you exactly how many properties on for colleyville grapevine south lake all of that it'll tell you exactly how many properties are on the market how long they've been on the market what their average sales price is what the the, the every, everything about real estate i'm telling you if you knew that your confidence would increase mm -hmm. why people don't come to you for your looks for your personality for your this that and the other or if you're for your spaniel <laughs> they come to you because you know something about real estate and i and you know just share with me your problem i don't and i think Sometimes we <clears throat> don't worry about what you look like. I don't care what my attorney looks like. Do you? No, no. I don't care what kind of personality my CPA has. I don't give a hoot about it. I go to them for a solution and knowledge that I don't have. Now, then, where then is where, quite frankly, you don't have to be an introvert, an extrovert, or anything else. You have to have sensitivity to say, 
I know I'm here to help. What's your problem? Mm -hmm. We are real estate doctors, pure and simple. And we've got to get over this, this fear that somehow they're judging me. I don't care. Again, my expectation of, of these professionals is only one thing. What do you, how can you help me? That's all there is to it. And so all you've got to do is have the basic skills to say, hey, Tony, um, <clears throat> what are you trying to do, bud? What do you need to do? You know, that question. Mm -hmm. You've had this property how long? How, is it working for you or not? I mean, that's all the, the, that's the kind of questions we need to learn to ask is about your you and your situation. Mm -hmm. Now, once I do that, and the conversation is, is on real estate, you, but primarily it's on your problem, not mine. All right. Right. Everything gets a little easier. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, you've got to know some of the answers. Now, Mike's doing research on things. But, uh, you know, if you got a problem, if you got a question, call Mike. He'll answer it right now. Mm -hmm. I don't care what Mike looks like or what he's doing, what his personality. I'm not going to judge him for that. I'm not going to judge you, uh, Lisa, that you're, that you're goofy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm and, not going to get to know you that well. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I really, so I think your expectations sometimes, you know, you're, you're too exposed. I don't want to be exposed. I want to, no, I'm a pro. I've got answers. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if we could give you a robe to wear, like a judge or something, and you could. If we, yeah. I don't think there's an official garb for real estate agents. Well, there ought to be. But yeah. it, it just, just be careful of the expectation. These people are not expecting you to be friendly. They're not expecting you to be uh, cute. <laughs> they expect you to know something about real estate that I don't know. That's Why? Right. I, yeah. I got a problem. You got a solution. Now, yeah. if you just take that approach, I leave the house every morning looking for somebody that's got a real estate problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I solve problems. We talked about it uh, several weeks ago in another class about um, the story, right? How to tell a story. And uh, one of the, the, every story has a problem and somebody's trying to solve a problem. And, you know, just having the elevator speech when you're in a group that I help people buy and sell real estate because it's become very difficult in the current market. And so I, I'm an expert in helping people be successful in real estate. And by I, that, the way, that's your job description and it's one sentence and you need to have it memorized. My name is Al, I'm a realtor. I help people invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's where we ought to start. Every, my name is Tony, I'm a realtor. I help people invest in real estate. How can I help you? Mm -hmm. And if it's a different, if it's a different oh, area, if you help older people, uh, you know, if if you're a seniors real estate specialist, you help people um, who are older find uh, uh, a resolution to issues that happen with seniors in selling homes and finding a new home, in downsizing perhaps. If you work with only buyers, you have a particular job title. If you work short sales, or uh, uh, for closers, whatever it might be. So always look at your elevator speech. And if you go into some place not knowing what to say, feeling inferior, because that's me walking into a meeting, a chamber of commerce meeting where everybody's friendly and everybody knows anybody, everybody. I'm the odd guy out. But what could I use to break the ace, the uh, break the ice? And it's to have the knowledge to be able to demonstrate that I have command of that, and hopefully. I'm a nice enough guy that people will like me for who I am as well. Um, Shelly, thank you, Bob. Thank you, everybody, for, for all of those. Uh, Shelly talked about limiting beliefs and alter her behavior and reactions. You read it on page 89. Uh, once you're woke up to it, you're re already starting to shift your perspective. Uh, remember, the money is scarce. Uh, that was a belief of hers. Well, money became abundant. If you don't believe in that, it's not going to happen. If you think that you're not going to sell anything, you're probably not. It's going to show. 
um, just as Tom Ferry says to some agents, that if you go overboard, people can smell commission breath. They know that you are so anxious to sell something, they can smell commission on your breath. You can also demonstrate to people that, you know, that you understand money is money is abundant. Um, she said, I don't know anyone became I am loved and admired by my sphere. So uh, I didn't know anyone. And uh, that's what she tried to do. She tried to grow, grow every single day. And she said, I can and I will become uh, her new belief. So I think all of us should have a mantra. All of us should have something taped on our mirror that we recite, that we look at. Some of, you know, writing affirmations can help us with that. And we've talked about affirmations and, and writing those. Have a mantra that will help you, really help you. It, some people think, oh, that's ridiculous. That's childish. It's stupid. It really isn't. And hers is, I can and I will. Okay, so we talked about affirmations. She said the next thing on page 90 was find the frequency. And she referred to several people, but one of them is Napoleon Hill. And Napoleon Hill, um, if you don't know who he is, pick up his book, uh, Think and Grow Rich is the name of the Napoleon Hill book. You can find it for free on the internet in a number of places. You don't have to pay for it. It is free. You can find an audio version um, that is free um, and it's available. But Napoleon Hill believed that there were 13, there were 13 things that were so important principles for everybody to achieve. And some of them are desire, um, imagination, um, and organized planning, the power of the mastermind. This, what we're doing today is one of Napoleon Hill's 13 principles of achievement, being part of a mastermind, having, uh, being able to make decisions, persistence, your subconscious, caring for your brain, making decisions from your gut. They're all things that are so important. Some people, as Sherry, thought the book was ridiculous. This is really ridiculous. But she decided to read it. She decided to understand what frequency is. One of my goals in my life is to complete a book that I've started called Think and Grow Rich for Real Estate Agents. You see it here. I'm putting it out in the universe today. I've put it out before. This is something I'm going to do, and I'm going to help people understand, or I'm going to transpose what Napoleon Hill says into how it, how it works for real estate agents in particular, because I believe the kind of decisions that we need to make as realtors are important. I think the faith that we have is important, the desire, the imagination that we have. And so I'm going to put something together that talks about how specifically do his 13 things really work for realtors. But in the meantime, uh, read his book. If you haven't read it, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. And some of the things she talked about, was surround yourself around like-minded people. Kara, you talked about your parents not wanting for you to leave. They were trying to protect you, right? They were trying to protect mm -hmm. you. Yes. They had a self-limiting belief themselves that you're not going to be able to make it if you go to California, if you go to New York, if you go wherever. You need to find people and surround yourselves. We all do, everyone. Surround yourself around people who believe in you in our like-minded people. And I hope we have that culture in our office. And part of our job is to go out and tell the story to others that it's important for all other agents to surround themselves around like-minded people that are positive, that have direction uh, in, in believe in what they're doing. Um, Sherry talked about practicing gratitude. I think it's hugely important. Um, talked about stop gossiping. It's hard. It's, it's hard for all of us. Just don't do it. Just stop. There's, there's, no, there's no reason to gossip. I'm as guilty as anybody. And I, I try to catch myself anytime I'm talking about somebody uh, that's in, not in a positive way, right? Positive, that's great. But otherwise, not. Repeat your goals. Repeat those things that are important to you. And uh, Sherry, Shelly, 
excuse me, mentioned every 90 days or every six months. I, I know that um, if if you really watch leaders at exit and people like Tammy Bonnell and her business plan, she looks at her goals on a, a timestamp. OK, she looks at she doesn't build. She looks at a year in advance, but she works in 90 day increments, as I recall. Quiet down once a day and think, just think. Shelley says uh, from Napoleon Hill's book, there are no limitations to the mind except those that we acknowledge. Both poverty and riches are the offspring of thought. So instead of having the offspring that I can't do it, I don't have enough money, I'll never have enough money, that I won't be successful, those are limitations to the mind. Don't acknowledge those. Find those that will help you beat that. Chapter eight, she talks about the ego. We'll go through this very quickly. Is it, you know, friend or foe or the other, the subtitle of the chapter is how not to self-talk yourself stupid. Your ego can be your friend or your foe. Uh, and for her, totally foe. She talked about the singing contest. Remember when you're reading in the book where she didn't want to get up in front of anybody and sing. And that and she talks about the shadow self that stops you from going for it, that that part of the ego which stops you from going for it. So her suggestion is write down a list of negative self-talk statements and limiting beliefs. And when your ego goes over the top, just stop. Write them down, acknowledge them, but know that confidence and ego are not the same thing, okay? A powerful technique that she talks about her ritual is to get into her high vibe and quiet her ego. Part of her high vibe, by the way, was the music that I had playing when we, you came into the meeting. She has a song that she picks out uh, every year. She selects a song uh, every year. For instance, I select a word as Tammy Bonnell does, probably Bob does, one word that's going to be their word for the year that will inspire them to move forward. She plays the music before every meeting, pop by her open house. It's her song is White Flag by the group Joseph, all women group. I listened to it when I read the book. Listen to it. See if that song inspires you. Find something that will knock you out of the negative state or mindset. And for her, for many people, music is that thing. Maybe a book will help you get out of the negative state. Maybe a conversation with any of us here will help knock you out of a negative state or a mindset. You got to get control of it or it's going to be used against you. There is a way for everyone to get what they want. Uh, her, it's not a me against you situation. Let's work together. Collaborating is always more powerful than digging your heels in just because you want to win. Collaboration is what we're doing, you guys. We're collaborating, trying to figure out how we can do better. You know, uh, Tony uh, mentioned a couple things about it, it, walking into a room and, and Tom as well. That's something we can do together. We can, instead of digging your heels and trying to figure it out, we can do something together. I think that should be that I got from this something we should go. Um, Mira, you, you, you might think ahead. about Jim. Um, yes. I'm a member of the Grapevine Chamber of Commerce. <clears throat> it is one of the neatest chambers. It's an award-winning national level cham uh, chamber of commerce. Um, they have a monthly meeting with a luncheon with uh, great speakers. Now, I know some of you live a long way from Grapevine, but it would be fun to go to the Grapevine Chamber lunch together as a team. Mm -hmm. And let's all wear our, an exit, something on our shirt, pin. Mm -hmm. And what if we all practice? There'll be, uh, there'll be 180 people in the room. We all practice walking around the room saying, hey, my name's Tony. I'm a realtor. I help people invest in real estate. What do you do? Mm -hmm. If we walked around that room, and literally practice that. I swear to God, you're going to find, dude, I had some pretty cool conversations. First mm -hmm. of all, 30% of the people in the room are realtors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's okay. That's a good thing. You, but I don't know, Jim. Um, 
the grapevine chamber is a fabulous chamber. I'm sure there's one over. Maybe maybe we ought to, Michael, you ought to join. I mean, you ought to, you and I take everybody to the grapevine chamber. And Jim, you go over to the Frisco chamber mm -hmm. and go to lunch and just practice saying hello to people, telling them you're a realtor. Um, believe me, it'll, it'll increase your confidence. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Bob. That's a great point. I'll go with you. All right. Okay. Um, she went on. We're right. We're right up to the hour. So I'll go through this very quickly, but talked about the things to remember when negotiating. Read that. So these are important, uh, eight important things that she pointed out that there's power in silence, no one to be quiet. Um, you give a little to get a lot. Digging your heels in is for amateurs. Gosh, you're going to deal if you haven't with so many people who dig their heels in. Ask yourself what it's worth. Speak with your clients in the same manner. Um, and remember, when you're negotiating, you're negotiating for, for your client. It's not about your ego. It's not about your position. It's not about your heels in the ground. It's for your client. Keep control of your client's expectations. Know their expectations. Smile. This isn't heart surgery. Think of it. Think of honey versus vinegar. And negotiating isn't about winning or losing. Keep in mind the end goal is to do what's best for your client. Don't take it personally. This isn't about you. Okay. There's been a few times when I have negotiated where, uh, pardon my language, but I can, I can remember one agent calling me an asshole. And I said, you know, you're right. I am an asshole because what I'm trying to do here is negotiate the best outcome for my client. And I know you're doing the same. So how can we work together to have a positive outcome for both of our clients? Take the asshole out of it. I fight hard for my clients. I, I remember it to this day. Uh, you can take it either way. You can hang up and then you blow it for your client. You're not acting in the best interest of your client when you take things personally. And finally, uh, filter advice uh, of your shadow self. So is the advice in line with who I am as a person when you get advice? Is the advice, uh, I'm not even sure what that word, with your business plan, um, is the advice from someone's shadow self projecting onto me? She talked about creating a logo. So everybody, uh, nice exercise this week. Create a logo for yourself. Gosh, you can find all kinds of ideas at Canva more than ever before. You don't need to hire a uh, professional. Find a logo that identifies with who you are. Now, hers is the person holding up a key. I don't know exactly what that means, but I do know if I see that again, or if it's recreated in all of her marketing, I'm going to know who it is just from her logo. So think about her logo is, is what she used and it's pretty cool. You can have your own one and it, you'll be that person who everybody identifies with. Okay. So that's everything for today. I know I rushed through the last couple of things. It's hard to cover all of this. And next week, we're going to cover chapters 9, 10, and 11. Know that chapter 12 is really a resource and reference guide for things. So let's read on to the next three chapters and bring with you ideas from reading the chapters and things that might be contrary to what I want to discuss, because this is about you. It isn't about me and things that are important to you and how your suggestion might help somebody in this room, somebody in, you know, that square next to you. How can, how can we help each other be better? Because that's what we're trying to do. Hey, Jim, right. may I ask a follow-up question? Yes, Bob. I'm fascinated by this book. I'm fascinated by Shelley. I'm thinking of reaching out to her to do a podcast for Exit Realty mm -hmm. uh, to promote the book. Um, tell me your reaction to this book. Do you all have it? Are you reading it? Tell me if is if is this making a difference enough that I should probably refer? Hey. See if this if this book is good enough. Maybe it ought to come in the newcomer packet of every exit realty salesperson that joins a company yes. gets, the, gets the book. Yeah. But I don't know how you feel about it. Give me just a little feedback on the book itself. Go ahead. I think it's best to hear from the people that are here. 
I agree, Bob. I, I think it should be given to uh, the first. I gave it to uh, a friend of mine who's starting his, their realtor career. I was actually reading the chapter about rejecting rejection. And it's not as if I've had no rejection in my professional or personal life before, but I had a friend in the neighborhood, two doors down, would didn't list with me, didn't tell me he was not going to list with me after we had a great conversation about it. So I was taking that personally. I was thinking, you know, what did I do wrong? Yada, yada. And actually, I finished reading <laughs> that chapter, I think it was page 90 something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, you know, wow, I had to get slapped in the face with reality to realize that they weren't going to use me. They had a good reason for not using me. Nothing I could do about it, but it wasn't because I was X, Y, or Z. It's just, it didn't happen. So, you yeah, know, I think this book brings things that we probably already know or have confronted before personally or professionally, but it's a nice reference and it brings it to the forefront. I think it's a great book. And I agree with this whole thing about the vibe, the vibe you give off and the vibe that you attract. I've not read one book about that, but I've had a lot of references to it professionally. So I'm going to buy the book. I want to read it because if it's just about projecting a better attitude and, and creating the attitude that attracts like people that uh -huh. have like goals, is it that simple? Hell, I don't know. I'm going to read the book. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank Mike, you. John. From your standpoint, Mike, what do you think as far as an agent developer? I, I really like it. I think it's amazing because it, it can work for somebody that's new, but it can also work for somebody that's like in my situation, moving from another state and trying to build something completely from scratch, which is, amen, has been really hard. And, you know, uh, one of those, you know, that's where the book's related to, you know, it's not, it's not failure. Cause I'm expecting to, in my mind, I was expecting to be like, I was in Los Alamos, but then I come here and I don't know the, I don't have the sphere that I have over there. Well, you're obviously, so I, you're clearly so it was a re, it's a reality check. You know, I, I couldn't expect to just be like, yeah, you know, a superstar, you know, day one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mike's story is her story. You just, you didn't come from Canada. You came from New Mexico and yeah. you came to a place where you knew no one uh, of four people. I mean, you knew mm -hmm. somebody, right? Yeah. Family. Right. Right. But yeah. Anyone else? What are your thoughts about the book? It, it, uh, for uh, for Bob, worth it? Not worth it? What do you think? Uh, definitely worth it. I'm actually on chapter ten, and I'm loving it. It's an easy read. It's mm -hmm. personal. I feel like I know her. She's relatable. So uh, this is definitely something I would pass on to someone that needs it. This is a good shareable book. Anyone else? Yeah. Thank you. I, I'm thinking if you like it. What a great gift for anybody you sponsor into real estate. Mm -hmm. Your first gift to them would be that book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even somebody you're trying to sponsor that's maybe with another company and yeah, it's just, just a good, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. The other thing too, I even, even for um, people that have been doing it for a while, it's really um, kind of takes you back to basics because we forget a lot of the basics stuff that we should be doing that that we yeah. kind of forget about yeah, yeah. okay and bob um uh shelly joined us on our first session on session one shelly was uh, good enough to give us her time she's such an interesting and giving person and she has some more tools that she's added to this we'll talk about them bob some yeah time. but she has a lot to give and and i think it's you know my thoughts were having been to 15 exit conventions is she's the kind of person that should be on the stage at exit. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm thinking too. Um, I, I was looking, she's still obviously practicing real estate because her, yep. her Facebook and LinkedIn page are just loaded with listings yep. and property. Yeah. yeah I yep. plan to, before I reach out to her though, um, you, know, you obviously have more of a relationship with her than me, Jim. I'll, I'll talk yep. to you about that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, any other comments? I know we're gone a little long. Thank you for hanging. Uh, any other comments? I'd like to give everyone a chance to I, go ahead. I reached out to her on Facebook just on a private message, and she's completely engaged and responds and even just has friendly conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's a real deal. I mean, she's got mm -hmm. more product to sell 
and she has a, another part of all of this, uh, which is a wonderful guide. I'll show it to you, Bob. It's it's my thought is that guide. It's it's a guide that shows people. Uh, it really shows them ask the right questions. Should you be in real estate? It starts from that point, and here's what you need to do to be successful. So, perfect. Okay. Any last comments? All right. Well, listen, if you ever want to look at 800 shot glasses, there's eight, there's 8,000 of them here in Burlington, Iowa at my brother-in-law's house. And uh, I bet he'd love to show them all to you. And until then, I hope you heard some woodpeckers in the background and some stuff. That's a beautiful place and um, a little cooler than it is in Texas. So Again, we'll be here next week, next Thursday, chapters 9, 10, and 11. Thank you for joining me, and uh, we'll see you next week, huh? Yeah. Bye, Bye, -bye. Bye everyone.